My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about... Turn that off. Today we're talking about nitrous oxide, or NOS. <laughs> and this just makes me laugh. Well, there is a question for you, um, very quickly, we'll just do this. Um, I don't know if this is a trademarked symbol, is this just something, is this a company? Is this actually a trademarked, what is it, or is it just the sticker that got passed around when everyone had nitrous? I'm not quite sure. Number two is, it's a bit Third Reichy for me, you know, it's a bit Nazi. I don't know why, it just, the arrow, and yeah, it just seems a bit Nazi to me. Anyway, <laughs> there's nothing Nazi about nitrous oxide. <laughs> So people have been waiting for this video for a, a while. Um, I'm not going to talk in this video. I'm not going to talk about installing nitrogen nitrous kits and all the rest of it. I'm going to actually talk about nitrous oxide. Um, so nitrous oxide, or you know, nitrous is um, N2O. So basically, it's a, a nitrogen and a nitrogen and and oxygen uh, just like that so we have an N an N and an O um, and it is a colorless gas I think its boiling point is minus 80 degrees Celsius or somewhere around there 80 90 it's it's really really cold and you have to really really chill it down just like you know liquid nitrogens and a lot of the other gases that are um, quite small molecules so uh generally with nitrous that we have in our you know cars for drag racing and bikes and all the rest of it you use nitrous uh and it's pressurized because it, otherwise if you let it out it just you know it basically just escapes it expands and escapes and evaporates um you know it's also known as laughing gas so you might have been to the dentist and had a bit has a slight metallic taste i've had a go on nitrous once it wasn't a rave or anything it was literally um dentist and yeah, it has that kind of metallic ting to it, I remember that. Now, well, this is the thing, nitrous oxide, um, as it is at room temperature, is not flammable. It is not a flammable uh, gas. There is nothing in this to be flammable because there is no um, real uh, energy to be had at. It is really quite stable, um, you know, and there is no, when you break these bonds, there's no real energy release um involved here obviously there would be some kind of energy use, but there's no fuel here so when we think back to our fire triangle we have to have a fuel an oxidizer and heat source there's an oxidizer but there is no real fuel here to be had so how does nitrous oxide work well um it's an oxidizer it's basically just oxygen now why don't we just have pure oxygen injection because it is very fucking dangerous Pure oxygen oxidizes things. Now, nitrous oxide does, but it's a lot more stable at doing it. Um, they're quite happily bonded this way as the oxygen to the nitrogen. If you use pure oxygen, again, you have to pressurize it, or have it down to low, low down temperatures. Problem is, <laughs> is a bottle of oxygen, pressurized oxygen, in your vehicle. You know, ambulances have it, stuff like that. It's a very dangerous gas to be fucking a liquid to be transporting around. You have a cra crash and then liquid oxygen starts spilling everywhere, it'll start evaporating, and then you need fucking pretty much any fuel source and any fucking amount of heat really, a stray spark, even the hot and hot exhaust, and you're just gonna go boom, you know, you're gonna get some serious, serious, serious heat. It, liquid oxygen pretty much makes anything fucking combust. You know, Thunderfoot did a video, um, of you know combusting diamond in an oxygen atmosphere yeah you know literally getting diamond to burn um you know is quite amazing if, if you actually think about that a fucking diamond for god's sake which at the end of the day is a rock that's the way most of us see it you know you get a rock to burn but he couldn't do that in a normal atmosphere he had to do it in an oxygen atmosphere and you imagine you've just spilt your tank of fucking whatever everywhere now it would be bad if you had nitrous oxygen but it's, it's a lot more stable um, so, because it's really stable, obviously, we inject it into our engines. Why do we inject it into our engines? Well, it means that we can actually basically 
really cheat at supercharging um, by just spraying in more oxygen and then more fuel. Uh, the problem with nitrous is that you usually use it in small bursts. The reason why is because the temperature, you know, if you can burn more fuel, you are releasing more energy, which means your temperature, your cylinder temperatures go up because we want higher pressures to get more power out of that engine. The problem is, is that people generally go a bit mad with it and you end up burning stuff within your engine. I mean, you end up, you know, melting rings, blowing through pistons and so on. So nitrous is good. Uh, at it, what it says on the tin, it is good at getting more energy, you know, it, getting more energy or allowing you to get more energy out of the fuel or out of a cylinder by putting more um fuel in there the stupid thing is in a sense that is when you start using nitrogen at uh, nitrous oxide nos um that it almost negates the whole point of even having uh, an intake stroke you might as well just go to let's just spray in oxygen uh, let's just spray in nitrous and fuel and then just compress that with a smaller smaller cylinder let's just do that uh, it can get a bit dangerous and you have to run the whole system on it, and it's quite expensive, and so on. Um, but it, you, you know, we, you know, we intake air because it has oxygen in it, twenty percent, pretty much by mass. Um, with this, you can basically just spray it in there and have at it. The problem is, um, is why don't we do that? So that's you know, surely the next question that a lot of people are asking right now is why don't we do that why don't we just spray in have an engine a small engine to get a lot of power out of it by just having nitrous and fuel the reason why is, is that you have to get it to elevated temperatures to break these bonds to actually liberate this oxygen and that is the problem is that your engine already has to be hot your combustion process has to be going before this it liberates this free oxygen in a sense that's one of the other problems it's a good thing because what happens is is you spark your engine, your engine will, um, your combustion will take place, the temperatures go up, the pressures go up, and then this oxygen is liberated, and then it reacts with the fuel that's basically just sat around it, and um, then you get a boost. So in a sense, you get a, a power boost with nitrous um, well after, well, I say well after, but after the initial ignition. You know what I mean? You're not just, it's not like using just better fuel it's um, a later combustion, just say like 5, 10, 15 degrees after top dead centre, which is really quite good. That's why it gives such a bloody kick, um, because you are creating quite a lot more torque, uh, because it's an after the, fa after the fact um, that the temperatures inside the combustion chamber have to be hot enough to then liberate this oxygen to then react that with your fuel. Um, Emissions wise, <laughs> you got extra nitrogen in there, which because you are getting to these elevated temperatures ends up becoming NOXs, you know, which we all know by now, I hope that they are the things that most people are bothered about that kill all the bumblebees and what have you. Um, you know, so it, it does work. It, it's, it's, there's no myth to it. Obviously it does work and all the rest of it. Um, it's just, and that's in a sense one of the other problems as well, is that your cylinder temperature goes up the way it was meant to do, designed to do, and then it lags a bit, and then it goes even higher. Yes, you get more torque, yes, you get more power over time, but you are pushing the engines, um, the uh, the metal properties. Um, yeah, you basically, you know, you're pushing the, uh, oh, you're pushing the, let them. God, if only I could spit that one out. So you're pushing the uh, you're pushing all the parts beyond their designed limit where it comes to pressures. Pressures, yes. Temperatures, more. You know, your piston rings don't have to do an awesome good job of what they do, um, and now you're really, really pushing them, and they do start to melt and pistons start to blow through, and all sorts of horrible things start to happen. You know, heads start to warp, cylinders start to go out around, all sorts of stuff. It depends how much you run. But the problem is, is that as soon as you've got a system installed, you can actually flow quite a lot through it, and that's the, the tempting. Let me just push it a bit high. Let me just push it a bit. Ah, oh, I've just fucking melted my head, to my crank. You know what I mean? It all goes titty wampus really quickly. 
I will talk, um, we will do another video on how the actual plumbing system works and how they all work and all the rest of it. For, for, for motorbike engines, I would pretty much avoid nitrous. Um, for the simple fact is we are already running quite high compression ratios. If it was up to me and it was allowed, I would much rather, and just see if anything could go, and just see doing drag racing and anything could go, what have you, I would much rather run leaded fuel than run nitrous. Um, it's just a bit harder on the engine. Um, where you know designing an engine to run high compression ratios means that everything has been upgraded or has been designed that way to take that on every single stroke where with nitrous I, I think the fast and the furious thing got everyone tickled about it where the fact is you push a button and you get more power it's yeah it, to me it's cheating <laughs> to a certain degree you know, you, if you're going to do that, well, then you might as well spray pure oxygen in there and stop being a pussy about it, you know, and then we'll, you know, uh, mop up your corpse afterwards. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, like I say, we'll do more about this, and I will see you in a bit.